This is New Cab News with Lauren Pollan. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Saskatchewan tabled its budget today. The Sask Party delivered a balanced budget with cost savings and sustainable spending top priorities. But seniors and families with children will have to pay more for prescriptions in a budget that pinches pennies but makes no deep cuts. It's one of the cost saving measures Premier Bradwall's government is using to keep the books in the black, along with a surplus cushion of $95 million. The government is also eliminating the equivalent of 500 full time jobs, but says that will be done through retirements and managing vacancies. Speeding up spending almost is up almost 5% with money earmarked for highways, more surgeries and a tax credit for first time home buyers. Meantime, Alberta is one step closer to a provincial election. The governing Tories use their majority in legislature to pass the 2012-2013 budget late last night. Premier Allison Redford said she wanted to pass the budget before sending voters to the polls. She's expected to call an election this coming Monday, leading to an April 23rd vote. And the head of the Alberta PC caucus says MLAs who were part of the Do Nothing Committee are going to be paying back some of the money they received. The controversy erupted earlier this month after it was discovered MLAs from all parties were getting money each year for sitting on a committee that hadn't met in three years. We talked about in caucus uh, and we just thought it was the right thing to do for uh for all Albertans, uh, we understand that our system is complex and it's pretty hard to, in 45 seconds or a minute to dis discuss that or explain it. So we thought in the best interests of all Albertans that we would uh, give the money back. The catch, the payback only dates back to this past October. The Wild Rose Constituency Office is officially open in Lloydminster and candidate Danny Hozak is ready for action. Albertans are eagerly waiting for the election train to get moving, but that hasn't stopped the Wild Rose from hoping it to get a head start on his campaign. We've had a, an outpouring of requests to, to volunteer, an outpouring of requests for signs to put up on private property. I really think that the, the momentum is, you know, our, we're bu building momentum with virtually with every day. To help with that momentum, Hozak's headquarters will be open every afternoon. He says he plans to run a positive campaign and has lots of interesting things to talk about. We think about. we're doing a pretty good job of sticking to our message. We, I mean, we think it's the story that will resonate with uh, Albertans when we get rolling. Hozak says he wants to make Lloydminster a destination instead of just a gateway. His party is aiming to reduce the regulatory burden on business and curb deficit We may well spending. be an unproven government, but we're running against someone who has proven that they cannot stop spending. We're looking at four years heading into five years of deficit spending. Prepping for and ready for an election whenever it's called. Well, doctors in Alberta are getting a raise. A tentative contract announced today between the province and doctors will see a 2.5% fee increase this year and a similar hike retroactive to last April. The deal provides a total of $181 million in new compensation. Saskatchewan is boasting the biggest single-year population growth since 1953. Stats Canada says the number of people in the province rose by more than 17,000 last year to an all-time high of over 1,067,000. The growth rate was the second highest in Canada, only behind Alberta. International immigration accounted for about two-thirds of the increase. We've all experienced sadness, but an uninterrupted feeling of an extreme low mood for two weeks can be diagnosed as depression, a mental illness that is getting more public attention due to its rising rates. Elise Cox has more. A constant feeling of sadness, worthlessness and emptiness. These are all symptoms of depression. When depression rates are high, it influences the number of suicides. They lose sense of hope. They become helpless. 
then they think, okay, if that is how life is going to be, how long can I keep this going? In Canada, there are about 10 suicides every day. Men are four times more likely to commit suicide, and the fourth leading cause of death in 15 to 44-year-olds is suicide. That is high and unacceptable. So what I would like to say about this is uh, a lot of people do this because they don't know that there is help out there. Ophelia Leon from Thorpe Recovery Center says oftentimes people turn to drugs and alcohol to cope with depression. Look, most people uh, use substances to avoid a feeling or avoid um, anything that is coming up that they cannot or don't know how to cope with it. And a person is more likely to give in to impulses while under the influence. So if there is already some depression going on and some hopelessness, uh, under the influence, the, pe the person is actually more likely to act on it in, in complete suicide. Recommended treatment for depression is to speak to a mental health professional, counseling, or a family doctor because diagnosis can be complicated. It's actually uh, very tricky because sometimes you can see somebody who is very, very, very sad and suddenly one day that person can look relieved. And it's not because they are feeling better, it might be because they already made the decision to end their life. Uh, I would also suggest that they do not leave this, uh, this person alone for an extended period of time and encourage the person to talk to them uh, about any issues that they may have. Uh, having a good uh, social support is uh, essential in preventing uh, suicide. This goes back to being connected in, in, um, as human beings. You know, it's, it's really worth it to ask somebody, you know, how are you doing? The Community Health Building offers services for mental illness, and the Alberta Health Link hotline is also a useful tool with a specific line for mental health inquiries. Elise Cox. New Cap News. Jara joins us now for our first look at weather and a gorgeous sunny day today. But mm -hmm. I hear we might not be all finished with the snow. No, we've been looking at that in the five day forecast for the last couple of days. So tomorrow was always the bogey day. We're looking at maybe about five centimeters tomorrow at least. So let's enjoy this evening. Today mm -hmm. was pretty. It's still looking pretty out there. Still at our high temperature for today. And generally speaking, the winds out of the south with a southerly heading, not gusting as much. Even the wind chill kind of faded in the picture by mid morning today. And as we compare it across the region, some more cloud cover in Cold Lake and area as well the battlefronts a high of plus seven but yeah it's not gonna last we're dealing with the possibility of some snow tomorrow running about a 60 percent chance of seeing about five centimeters details coming up later in the cast